If you struggle to keep your cool and act calm, this episode is for you. Welcome to Freestyle Friday, where I kind of just roll off the tip of my tongue, whatever is going on this week. It is not a formalized episode and it does not have a script. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. I am recording from Melbourne and I've been here since Tuesday and I thought I would bring you this episode today to talk about emotional regulation because it seems to be a hot topic, but how the heck do you actually do it and do it well and successfully? The reason I decided to speak about this topic was because I am emotionally dysregulated at the moment, probably not as bad as I was this morning, but I want to let you know that it happens to all of us and none of us are saints in managing it. And there are a few things you can do to try to A, prevent it from happening, B, minimize the impact that it has, and C, try to repair what has gone on. So this episode will be a summary of that. Grab your pen and paper and let's get into it. Right, picture this. Your sister wants you to go to the gym at 6.05 in the morning. You set your alarm, but you hardly sleep the night before. My own fault, I had too much caffeine yesterday and I was lying awake last night in bed. My alarm goes off and I'm already pretty much awake and I think, do I go, do I not go? And I already pulled the pin the day before because I didn't have a good sleep. And I thought, you know what, I'm awake, let's just go, let's just have this good time. So I get up and trying to leave my parents' house is trying to leave Azkaban prison in Harry Potter, right? Or uh, what's that other prison called? Azkaban, Alkazam? Anyways, and it's a whole procedure and there's a whole set of hurdles. Now, if you are tired and you're trying to leave your house before 6 a.m. or around 6 a.m. and things are hurdles, it is so annoying. Now, I'm extremely grateful to be staying at my parents' house. I'm very lucky to be here. But there are certain things that come up that remind me of when I was living back at home that were very frustrating and annoying to deal with. And I'm not sure what it is, but when you tell your Greek mother about something that particularly annoys you, they can often get triggered. So I'm very mindful about how I bring things up. So the one thing my mum does, and she's always done, it's the reason that my sister, you know, they used to clash a lot is because my mum tends to move things, okay? And I'm not just talking just moving your bag from one seat to another. She will move certain things, put them in certain places, and in her mind, she's helping you. In her mind, she's cleaning the space, she's cleaning the clutter, right? So I knew we brought this massive bag of supplements and I just wanted some branch chain amino acids, some BCAAs to put in my water this morning. It's just really good with muscle recovery and I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere and everywhere and I ended up waking up my partner and saying, where is the bag? And he's like, I've put it in this room. I'm not sure. He knows what my mother's like and he found it in one of the bedroom closets, right? So I found it. Okay, it's okay. I've left enough time. It's all right breathe Steph it's fine yes this is annoying but it's going to pass it's going to be okay there's nothing you can do that's going to make you feel better it is what it is I understand it's frustrating of course it's reasonable that I feel frustrated so I think the first thing I do in these situations is I really validate myself because the reason many people get dysregulated is because it's triggering something where they don't feel validated so for me I want to my mom to acknowledge that it is annoying when she moves things that we put in a specific place so we can access it for next time but she obviously wasn't there to do that so I had to do that for myself so I said I understand it's really annoying it's okay Steph you found it this will pass it's not a big deal in the big scheme of things and then I'm looking for the car key and I'm asking my partner where did you put the key he said it's here it should be here and we're looking for it As I'm driving, I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll just take a different car. Luckily, I could take another car. As I'm driving, I just want to send my partner an angry text message such as, you know, so annoying, can't find the key. Like, you need to be more present. Why aren't you aware of where you're putting things, blah, blah, blah. And to be honest, he hasn't been that present this week. He's been unwell and then on top of the dog dying. So I'm stuck kind of between being empathetic and understanding and compassionate. And can you please exist? Um, can you be present? Can you be mindful? Can you engage? Can you participate in life? So 
that's the sort of ground I'm standing at at the moment. But long story short, as I'm driving to the gym, I realize I have the key. I have the car key in my bum bag I was looking for and I wanted to yell at my partner for misplacing. So I texted, texted him straight away and I said, you're not going to believe this. I'm so sorry for trying to make you look for the key at 5.30 this morning. It's in my bum bag. And I said, do you need to go to work? What's happening? Da, da, da. He said, it's all good. We'll talk about it when you get home because he just, he knows me and he knows me well. And I'm just so dysregulated. I'm driving to the gym and being dysregulated just means you're in fight or flight. You're on edge. You're irritable. It feels like something can just snap you over, right? And things can make you more vulnerable to being flipped over the edge. So number one is lack of sleep so for me that's a massive trigger lack of sleep so I know I'm always increasingly irritable if it's that number two there's you know time pressures if you've got a time pressure that can make you more vulnerable to losing it if you haven't eaten properly you know if you are anxious if you are stressed all these things make it a lot easier for you to flip the lid so think of your window of tolerance as a window or a jar And people's jars are different sizes. And if you have a lot of stress, if you've had a lot of trauma, your jar is likely to be very small, which means it doesn't take long for your jar of tolerance to fill up and then it's overflowing. And when it overflows, that's when you lose it. That's when you flip the lid. That's when you go into dysregulation mode. Usually my jar is pretty medium sized because I've learned to tolerate things better I used to be smaller I used to get you know activated quite quickly but that was other reasons I used to have an eating disorder I wasn't sleeping well I had you know all that going on but I've learned to make it bigger and you can make your jar bigger and I just said I know I need a physical strategy so as I'm driving to the gym as I'm thinking of all the things I want to say and yell and make a scene about I just acknowledge it I just name it And I say, I'm really dysregulated right now. I'm really irritable. I'm feeling on edge. I'm feeling annoyed. I'm feeling frustrated. But I said, exercise is a physical strategy that's going to help regulate what's going on. Let's just take some deep breaths. Let's focus on getting there. So I'm just, I'm focusing on the performative aspect. I'm focusing on what I need to do. I need to follow the map. I need to park. I need to get there. My emotions, they can sort of just be pushed aside for now, but they are valid and we'll come back to them later. I do the class, et cetera, and I was actually laughing. I was laughing so much because I made the comparison of how trying to leave mum's house in the morning is like trying to escape from a prison because there's just so many, there's hurdles. It's finding the right car key. It's unlocking the gate. It's locking the gate behind you. It's, you know, finding a gym towel that is the right size. It's, you know, finding a protein shake or a drink bottle and things that, you know, are hard to find because you're not used to it. So I had a bit of laugh about that. And then I come home and I'm like, how do I not lose it at my mum? Because this is something we say over and over again. And I just took a deep breath. And by this time I was starving. So another vulnerability point. And mum opened the door, which scared me (laughs) because I wasn't ready for that. And I just explained I was looking for the supplements this morning. And she was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Um, you know, I put them in the closet because I didn't want the baby to get a hold of them because she could have had them. And I'm like, she really couldn't. But that, yeah, okay, I understand that. But I just said, Mum, it's annoying when we've put something where we can find it and you go and hide it or you put it somewhere that's really difficult to find it. She said, I know, I know. And I was like, whoa, taking responsibility, accountability is hot. Go, Mama. And that just made me feel good. So I said, yeah, thank you. Thank you for acknowledging it is annoying. I understand you want to keep the house tidy. I understand, you know, stuff might be everywhere, but yeah, it just was a bit annoying. So that was validated. That was okay. And then you need to let it go. There has to be a point where you really need to let go of your frustration. Once you validate, once you do your deep breaths, once you've had something to eat, it's time to move on. You know, it's not going to matter in a year from now. And if you're struggling to move on, you've really just got to ask yourself, what is it that I'm really needing right now? Why doesn't this feel better for me? What is it? What is it that I'm needing? Am I needing some carbs? 
Am I needing a good night's sleep? Am I needing a cuddle? What is it I'm really needing? If you feel like you can't regulate your emotions, nothing's getting better, you've done all the strategies, ask yourself, what is it I'm really needing? And maybe it is just to sit in this feeling for a while. If you tend to be an overthinker, you are probably an underfeeler, which means you may intellectualize a lot of things, but you're not sitting in the emotion enough. And we really want to encourage people to do that as much as possible. All right. Now the next thing. There are still some things lingering that I feel annoyed about, but I'm not sure at this stage if they are valid, if they are reliable, if they are accurate. So what I recommend you do if you're feeling frustrated, if you're someone who flips off the handle easily or you're someone who gets dysregulated or you lose your, your cool at other people, it's okay. The key is working on this and quick reparation. So I will write down all the things that are annoying me or I'll write a message. So if I'm wanting to send a message to my partner or to someone before I actually click send, I will write it down. And do you know what I've just realized? I was writing it in a message I was about to send to my partner and I've actually wrote it in a message I was about to send to a friend. How awkward if I would have sent that. So luckily I didn't click send because it would have gone to my friend, this like personal relationship message, lol. So I love to use the notes of my phone and I'll write in the notes of my phone all the things that are frustrating me or annoying me or I'll write the angry text in there and then let it simmer, right? Just like a stir fry, let it simmer for a little bit. Just write what you need to get out, write it down. And then I'll write it out. And as I'm writing this, I can see I'm so tempted to say, you did this and you said this and you didn't do this and blah, blah, blah. The issue is when people try to communicate, they focus on describing the other person's flaws. They focus on the other person's character. You're never on time. You're not organized. You never do this. Rather than how does the situation make you feel? We need to get into describing a situation rather than actually just berating someone and bringing them down. And the way we can do this is we start by describing what was the situation? How did it make you feel? Once we've described the situation, how did it make you feel? I want you to think about what is your desired outcome in this situation? I actually just paused that because <laughs> my partner was outside speaking on loudspeakers so loudly. And that's just one thing that <laughs> grinds my gears. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So I just looked at him and he put the phone on silent. So my apologies. So going back, if you are going to bring something up, I want you to focus on what is my desired outcome? What is my dream? What is my dream in this communication, right? And this is all related back to emotion dysregulation because at some point there is going to have to be a moment in time where you communicate with someone and where you share how you feel and you want to do this in the most effective way possible. So once you've calmed down, because you never want to have a discussion with someone when you are dysregulated or emotional or overwhelmed, think to yourself, what do I want to get out of this? What is my desired outcome? What is a dream that I want to achieve in this conversation? And then I want you, once you've described the situation to your partner or your friend or your mom, whoever it is, you can do this with anyone you are setting boundaries with right is tell them what your desired need is what is your positive need what is it your partner can do to shine for you what do you want them to do instead of what you resent about them when we're angry and upset we can often focus on resentment but what is it you want to do so if we go back to the situation with my mom moving things it might just be, I want my mom to put things where I can see them. And if she puts them where I can't see them, to let me know where they are. That's my ideal thing. Instead of telling her, when you move things, it's really annoying and I can't find them. What is it I'm wanting 
her to do. And once you focus on that, then you can all move towards a compromise, right? The issue is in communication and in emotion dysregulation is one, we don't calm ourselves down before the conversation and two, we move too quickly towards compromise and solution focused work before we know what the problem is. So I want you to ensure that your partner, your mum, your sister, whoever you're having this conversation with is on board and you can say to them, okay, in your mind, what do you think the problem is or what do you think it is that bothers me? Okay. Now, many people might say, yeah, but I'm too stressed out. I'm too dysregulated. That's okay. If you need a break, Tell the person you're talking to, I need a break and we'll come back to this. You want to self-soothe without thinking about the fight, thinking about what's going on. Go for a walk because when you're flooded, you're not going to have any meaningful conversation. You need to do something distracting and calming, going for a walk, meditation, deep breathing. And then once you both have a clear understanding of what the problem is, then you say, okay, let's move towards compromise and understanding. You might not move on certain things that are inflexible for you and same with the other person. So my mom might say, I don't want things on the kitchen bench, whereas I just want to put things on the kitchen bench. Okay, let's compromise. How about I put them in the lounge room and then we don't move them from there. They don't go in any mysterious closets or containers or drawers. Okay, so we move towards the compromise. The last thing I'll probably say on this is there is no such thing as constructive criticism in a relationship. Constructive criticisms just, you know, kind of set you up for failure. What do I mean by that? Constructive criticism is when you say, you know what, I really love you, but when you do this, it drives me nuts. Instead, I want you to ask what it is you want in a way that's effective. You know what? Hey, hun, I noticed that the dishes didn't get done. Would it be okay if you can do them once you've got some time? rather than I really love you, but I hate when you don't do the dishes. Set the tone, make it effective, make it useful. So in summary, I want you to know that everyone gets dysregulated. Everyone has a different size jar. So that'll determine how often you get dysregulated, how often you flip into your fight or flight, and how often you feel a bit stressed and overwhelmed and on edge. When you're in that state of mind, You are not thinking with logical mind and you need a physical strategy to calm down. There are things you can do to increase the size of your jar or increase your tolerance. And these are things on a day-to-day basis, such as meditation, getting enough sleep, eating properly, sorting out your mental health, going for walks, exercising, practicing, calming down in the moment, bringing your baseline level of arousal down as well over time. When you're dysregulated, name it so you can tame it. Validate yourself in that moment. Validate your needs. Ask yourself what you need and give yourself that. It can be as simple as I'm feeling really frustrated because of this and that is reasonable given the circumstances. Many people are so hard on themselves. You shouldn't be feeling this. You shouldn't be feeling that. You're a failure. Da 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 Self-hatred. Don't do that. Be compassionate. Compassion reaches more goals. And then once you're calm, have the effective communication with your loved one. Okay, so let them know what the situation is, how the situation is making you feel. Focus on your desired outcome and what you want rather than what you resent about the person or about what they've done. Thank you for listening to this episode on Freestyle Friday. I hope you found it useful and effective. I've probably gone off on a little bit of a pre-Christmas tangent, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. Now, hopefully by the new year, I will have a new editor and we'll have some nice fancy music. But for now, I really appreciate you still tuning in into this raw, unedited version of the podcast. If you're enjoying it and if you like the episodes, let me know. I now have a link where you can rate it on Apple podcasts below and you can also leave a review or rating on Spotify. Thank you so much for being here and I really wish you have the most merry Christmas. Enjoy all the foods without guilt. If you need help with any of your relationship with food, click the link below and we can have a chat about it. Have a safe and happy Christmas and I'll see you in the next episode.